Timber Bean. Timber Bean. <clears throat> Alright, what's up? Hello. Today we're going to learn how to play the tambourine for all you little percussionists out there. So, first things first, find a tambourine. <laughs> Lucky for you, I have this lovely uh, plate that was made in 1975. Yep. That's me. Now, I'm gonna, before I even start, I just want to mention that yes, I have fake tan on. Yes, it is developing. So, yeah, I look kind of crazy. Just overlook that part. It's gonna be fine. Happy Easter. If you, you know, if you like that idea, if you don't like the idea of Easter, happy Sunday. It's all cool. It's all cool. All right, now, first things first about tambourine. You're going to take your non-dominant hand. Now, for me, that's my right hand because I am left-handed. But for the sake of the majority of the planet, I'll demonstrate as if I were right-handed. So take your non-dominant hand, so left hand, and you're going to make a little crook in your palm if you can't see right here. You see this right here? Oh, don't mind off the fake tan on my hands. All right, you see all this little crook here? can't do that right all right yeah but you see what I mean the crook right here under your fingers you're gonna put that on the rim of the tambourine like that fits right in there all snug like isn't that neat now it could change depending on how big your hands are and how big the tambourine is you know all right so now you're gonna place your thumb on top we're gonna say this is the top for now place your thumb on top fingers on the bottom to grip and that's how you would hold your tambourine. Now, it's a no-no to put your thumb or your fingers in a tambourine. There would be like a little hole in the side. Don't put your fingers in that, right? Imagine this, you're in band and another child runs up to you. It's Kevin, nobody likes Kevin. Kevin wants the tambourine that you have in your hand. Kevin rips tambourine out of said hand your finger is now broken. There you go. That's why you don't do it. So anyway, back to this. Now you're going to have to figure out your body placement after you are holding it, right? You can't hold it like this and play like that. So, I mean, I guess if your director tells you to, but anyway, do this. You're going to take your tambourine and you're going to hold it at mm, like a 45 degree angle. Let me back up. I like a 45 degree angle. I should have written those notes darker, shouldn't I? and 45 to 35 degree angle in front of you just like this and that's how you're gonna hold the tambourine it's just like this like that right in front of your body like this so you can do all the strokes you need to do all right so now we're gonna learn how to make sound on the tambourine how to hit it how to stroke it you know do all that fun stuff unlike the snare drum or your like melodic instruments there we go um, you have like an implement, you have this tool between yourself and the instrument, you know, your, uh, your drumstick, your mallets, all that kind of stuff. So on these, um, your, your tool is your hand. Okay. So we're going to hold it just like I taught you how to do 45 degree angle in front of you, all that good stuff. It's fun. It's great. It's fresh. And you're going to take your hand. All right here, you're gonna lock these four fingers together. And you're gonna make a little puppet, right? A sock puppet, you might say. But we're gonna call this a little puppet hand. Say hello, Mr. Puppet Hand. Hello. Okay. So we're gonna use our puppet hand and use our wrist mostly. You none of this when you're playing the tambourine. You don't want the snake. You want the puppet. Okay. So for your tambourine, which is this. Uh, plate from the 70s you're gonna hit in the middle like that and that'll be your mezzo forte your like louder typically sound right there just your general sound is more towards the middle of your tambourine with your sock puppet hand okay now in order to change the dynamics so like you would on a snare drum where from the middle is louder as you go towards the edge softer you're going to use the same principle here where middle is louder 
and then out towards the edge is softer. Except you're going to use less fingers to kind of help that. So you could say that this is your puppet hand and then you're going to go to fancy drinking tea. And then this is your super fancy, like double the fancy, you know. And then your sweet tea. Gotta love sweet tea. And then as you move out, you see how it gets softer as you lift the fingers up, right? Okay. So now, if you want to add a little bit of dryness to your sound, you're going to add a little bit of skin to your sound. And that sounds a lot more morbid than it is. <laughs> but anyway, um, you're going to take your hand, you know, place it kind of on here, kind of wrap it around here like this. You're going to use this index finger and bring it back like a rubber band and just snap it back. And the harder you do it, the better. You're going to use more than you think you need to use on here. Just like that. And I guess you could call this the waiter, maybe. And that's what that would be. Take your hand like a server, hello, hi, here's your food kind of thing. Take your plate, your tambourine, not your plate. And you know that that sound, it was, you know, sounds much better when you're using the instrument. But we work with what we got here, all right? So now, next, if you want to go louder than mezzo forte, like, I, you know, I just showed you how to do mezzo forte all the way to, like, piano and then, you know, the pianissimo, whatever. If you want to go louder than mezzo forte, so say you want to go to forte, you're going to act like you're knocking on a door, right? You're going to bend your knuckles like this, right? And then this, you know, I don't want to break my finger again because I just got the use of it back. So we're gonna go a little gentle <laughs> on this ceramic. So, and I'll just knock on it. And that's how you would make it louder. And then you can make another one called Lights Out. This last one to even make it even louder. And you would especially use these on like rooftop accents or when you really need a pop from your sound. So you're gonna take your fist, you know, and make sure there's like that pocket of air that's up here in there, right? And when you hit it, on here, it's like, it's really gonna look like you're being aggressive. Don't be afraid to be aggressive. Um, ah, you know, again, I don't wanna break my finger again. So anyway, we're just gonna pretend like we're hitting it really hard and it would make a pop almost to your sound. And that's what you would use for your accents and stuff like that. And those are your rolls, your stroke types, not your rolls. All right, now time for the the second instrument in our instrument triad of the day, of the week, you could say. We're going to the triangle. Now, I need some things. Triangle, because I don't have a triangle. You have a clip on anything up in my pants? Anyway, is there a clip in here? And the Reese's Puffs? No, you nasty. Gonna find the cheese. We're gonna find the cheese. Cheese. And I think I had a clip. Oh, I already ate all of them. So there's no clip. I've got a bottle opener. So we're gonna use this as our clip today. So, on to how to hold the triangle clip. Okay. Now, we're gonna take our. Wait non-dominant hand, which is the left um, for most people. So we're gonna do that again. We're gonna take our non-dominant hand, we're gonna take our hand. Hi, hello, how are you? What's up? High five, how's this quarantine going for everyone? Now, we're gonna take our three fingers, our middle ring and pinky finger, and we're gonna lock them together, just like this, right? It looks kind of funky. And then you're gonna have this V, I'll use that as a backdrop. You're gonna have this V in here. And you're gonna take the nose of your clip. I'm gonna say the nose is the pointy part. And you're gonna stick it right there. Rest it on here, right? And then you're gonna take your thumb, put it under, finger on top. And this is how you would hold the clip. Let me get up close for that. This is how you would hold the clip, just like that. Okay, so now I need a beater. 
And I was gonna get creative with this, but I'm not. So here's just a really cool pencil that I have. It's made of metal. All right, anyway, this is your beater. You're gonna hold your beater just like you would hold a snare drumstick or your mallet, you know, take your index, your first joint, and take your thumb, make that fulcrum right there, the needle through the thumb, through the, you know, we've talked about this before. And you're gonna do the rest of it together like that. There's your beater. You're gonna take your clip, hold it just like that. And you've got your way in a triangle. So let me get to that. Uh -huh. Fun, okay. I'm oh, being creative using my resources properly, you know? Ah, no, it's to here in some way, shape or form. Bet you, bet you didn't think of that. Bet, bet you didn't think of this. Help. <coughs> oh, I oh got the road. All right. Okay, so depending on whether or not I put that last bit in, I just made a triangle out of tin foil, and I am impressed with myself. So we're gonna take our beater, just like this, take our triangle, take our triangle clip, just a close up of what we got going on here, right? And the most general place that you're gonna strike the triangle, this is uneven and driving me crazy. The most general place you are gonna strike the triangle is the bottom middle, right there makes no sound perfect all right the next most common place you're gonna hit that triangle is over here in the right hand corner my right hand corner to you it looks like left but we'll you know deal with it the right hand corner or the right middle up here like that those are your three most common places you'll strike a triangle and that's that okay and this is gonna be the part where i'm glad i live by myself crash symbols now i do not own crash symbols but you know what i do own saucepan lids okay so we're gonna take these they make sound right make a little more sound than the other instruments have so a typical crash symbol is not gonna look like this right they're much bigger much heavier they're gonna have some straps instead of these knobs right it's gonna be a strap so just imagine that there are straps coming off of this okay so what you're gonna do is and with all of these instruments need i add with all of these you want to make sure you have a good posture you want to make sure that you're not like playing like that nobody wants to see that okay so you're gonna hold your straps like you would your snare drumstick, your mallets, uh, the beater for the triangle that we just talked about. It's like that, wrap it around, and there's your straps. But for this case, I'm going to be holding it like this because I don't want to... These are actually like iron. Um, not cast iron. Actually, I don't know. These are heavy duty. It'll hurt if I drop it. I don't want to break my toe. So anyway, I'm just going to hold it like this, but... Imagine that there's a strap again, and you're holding it like this, and like that. And now, once you're holding your symbols, your crash symbols, you're going to position them. Position them. Wow, words. All right. Now, they're going to be perpendicular to the floor. What that means is the angle of this and the angle of the floor, which hopefully is flat, is forming a right angle just like that right perpendicular all right and then they're going to be parallel to each other like this right you can close one eye to see you know if they're parallel but you kind of get the point there they're parallel together that's how you position them keep don't be flapping them we don't want no chicken little no chicken little symbols we're going to do just normal symbols like this all right parallel to each other perpendicular to the floor and that's how we're going to position them it's pretty self-explanatory. The further away your symbols are, 
the louder they are gonna be versus when they're close, they're softer, right? That's just basic physics, that's basic knowledge. That just makes sense, right? So, soft crashes are not gonna be out here. They're not gonna be out here. They're not gonna be here. I don't know what you wanna do, but they're gonna be closer together, right? And again, you're gonna wanna make sure that they are parallel to each other, perpendicular to the floor. <laughs> For the sake of comedy, I'm just gonna say that there is in fact a 60 year old man running down the sidewalk outside my window as we, right? You wanna make sure they're parallel also to each other because you don't want this. You don't want it to sound weird. You want to make sure that they are hitting at the same time. Okay, and then moving on to our last crash, the repeater crash. Uh, you're going to want to match grip again, parallel to each other, perpendicular to the floor. And then this is where things get interesting, so I'm going to move closer so, I can, so you can see better. Okay, here are your parallel things, right? Now you're gonna move one down like this so that they're a little offset from each other, okay? And you're gonna angle this guy. You're gonna angle this guy, right? Preferably the right side. And you're gonna angle this guy, right? So this is what you're gonna find in marches and marching band symbols, right? They're gonna be doing that. And <laughs> it's like a flam. Well, it would on a cymbal, but not on pot lids, apparently. And it just says in my notes to crash them. So that's that, you know, your repeater crash. Over, they're a little bit louder than your soft crashes, but you get the point. Wow, I bet that's really not fun to listen to, is it? Okay, anyway, that's that. That's your crash cymbals thing. Thank you for watching this. Thank you for bearing with me. I, you know, hopefully this fake tan develops well and I don't look crazy when I wash it off later. There's a huge bird outside in my yard. Uh, thank you for this trip of ADD. I hope some of my jokes made your time worth it. I hope quarantine is going great. I know that quarantine is not fun. And um, listen, living alone during uh, social distancing is definitely not the most fun time uh but you can do what you can you know hope you're staying healthy staying happy have a great day